Welcome back in. Let's dive right into the deep end. Space exploration has never been more exciting nor more diverse. What was once the domain of nations is now spread out among governments, startups, big name tech billionaires, you name it. It's fascinating. Washington Post space reporter and author Christian Davenport's job is to share these types of stories and the headlines that will have people talking. His new book is Rocket Dreams, Musk, Bezos, and the Inside Story of the New Trillion Dollar Spacecraft. Christian will be giving a book talk at the Zima flight on October 1st. Christian Davenport joins us now with a preview. Christian, welcome. Thanks for having me. Happy to have you. First off, what led you to a career in space journalism? Oh, it's interesting. So I didn't actually grow up a space fan at all, actually. I mean, I was, uh, my first memory of space is watching the tragedy of the Challenger space shuttle explode. Um, and why I like things like, you know, Star Wars and Star Trek, um, I didn't really get the bug until I was covering the military for the Washington Post. And this was about 10, 12 years ago when some guy I'd kind of heard of named Elon Musk was suing the Pentagon for the right to be able to compete for national security launch contracts. And I was like, who is this guy who's trying to sue his way in to get government contracts? And the more I started paying attention to him and what SpaceX was doing and Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin, and at the time, Richard Branson and Virgin Galactic, you know, I think I follow that old journalism mantra, which is follow the money. If some of the richest people in the world are investing their resources into this, we should be paying attention. Yeah, definitely yeah. something that has sparked a lot of curiosity. So in the past, spacewalks and moon landings, these were the stuff that captivated everyone's attention at a time. But in recent decades, it seems that interest has decreased just a little bit. What do you why do you think that is? Well, I, I think it's because we really tie our ambitions and our inspiration in space to human spaceflight, you know, putting astronauts in a rocket. And that's what we saw, you know, at the dawn of the space age with Mercury and Gemini and Apollo and the moon landings, as you mentioned. Um, and then the space shuttle era came along and it was supposed to be sort of this routine access to space and it didn't quite happen that way. And then after those two tragedies, Challenger and Columbia, the space shuttle was retired in 2011. And for almost a decade, NASA and the United States government did not have the ability to fly humans anywhere. And in fact, we relied on Russia to fly our astronauts to the International Space Station. But now that's changed. SpaceX is flying astronauts for NASA. Uh, Boeing also has a contract to do that. They've had some, you know, uh, well-noted struggles. But you're seeing a lot more money and a lot more interest and enthusiasm come back as there's this new era of space exploration that's driven in large part by the commercial sector, by private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin. Yeah, maybe expand a little bit more. We're kind of on this cusp of a new era that may just jumpstart people's fascination again. What's going to just take us over the top? Well, next year, for example, uh, NASA is going to fly a crew of astronauts around the moon. I think that will be a big deal. And we're seeing more and more commercial companies build spacecraft uh, to land cargo and supplies on the moon. Again, commercial vehicles uh, operating, owned and operated by private companies landing on the moon. Eventually, uh, NASA intends to land uh, humans on the moon. But what we've seen now also that separates this era is a space race with China. China has really advanced its capabilities. It is aiming to land on the same swath of real estate on the moon that the United States is targeting. That's the South, the South Pole of the moon, which is really important because that's where there's water in the form of ice. And so we now know that that resource, which is, of course, vital for human life, but its component parts, hydrogen and oxygen are also could be used for rocket fuel. Uh, and then that allows you to get more places in the solar system, perhaps even Mars. So we are at sort of the beginning-ish of this new commercial space age, which is what I wanted to chronicle in the book. And it's really only going to be taking off more from here. So this new space age that we're in, I mean, I feel like these tech billionaires, they're so mm -hmm. integrated in it. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos described how they've been able to change the game here. And in your opinion, is it a good thing? 
Uh, that's a great question. Um, they've been able to change the game because they can just move faster and, and, and innovate and try new things. So, for example, both uh, Blue Origin and uh, SpaceX, they reused their rockets. I mean, for decades, for generations, the rocket would launch. The first stage would essentially fall back into the ocean, never to be used again. They've perfected the art of reusability. They're now working on new technologies, not just reusability, but rapid reusability, and also doing things like trying to store a propellant rocket fuel in orbit. So you have these depots in orbit so you can refuel spacecraft in space. Uh, so you don't have to just fuel up your rocket, go to space and come back and then be done. Now you can extend your mission just as if you were driving across country, you would refuel your car on the way. That said, I, I think there is a real point of tension that you get at in your question. And we're putting so much of the space enterprise into the hands of you know, a relatively few companies, and particularly SpaceX, which has emerged as a dominant player in the space industry, and Blue Origin and others have lagged behind. And so much of what we depend on for SpaceX is really in their hands. They're responsible for flying NASA's astronauts to the International Space Station, cargo and supplies to the space station, launching national security satellites for the Pentagon and intelligence agencies. And there just hasn't been uh, enough competition to really give them a run for their money. So we're we're seeing over time a maturation of the space industry that will maybe make it more of an, a level playing field, but that's not there quite yet. Mm -hmm. Still more to come. Christian Davenport, author of Rocket Dreams, set to give a book talk at the Museum of Flight on October 1st. Thank you so much for joining us on Arc Seattle. Oh, thanks for having me. Thank you. We've also added a link to information about tickets in the book now at comonews.com slash hotlinks. I wanted to ask Christian if he'd ever go to space. Oh, oh my goodness. Next time. Next time. I'll send okay. him a note. I'll send him a follow-up <laughs> question. It's fascinating. Yeah. Isn't it? It really is. I know, and there's still, I mean, there's the NASA's mission with the moon, but also there's Mars. There's the whole Artemis missions that they're working towards as well. Yeah. So it is an exciting time to be paying attention to space. Absolutely. New developments, I think, are just going to continue. Yeah, quite a bit.